point winner on the road. 73-65, the final. Stan Albeck's first win ever in Henry Levitt Arena. Losses, they won only four games all of last year. Whether he's a starter or the sixth man, Eddie Bird has been their key player. He's the top Sycamore scorer, averaging almost 15 points per game. He gets help from Travis Inman's 10 points a game, and much of Travis's game comes from the outside, where he's hitting almost 39% from three-point land. Bradley got off on the wrong foot this year, going 1-9, and nine, but Stan Albeck has settled in a basic six-man unit, and Andy Bastock has caught fire, double figures in eight consecutive games. And then there's the steady play of the big man, Luke Jackson. Big Luke leads the Braves against the Sycamores, and it's coming up next. Now for today's game between Indiana State and Bradley, welcome everyone to Breakfast at Bradley. We'll have an 11 a.m. tip-off today for these two Missouri Valley Conference teams. A pleasant good day, everyone. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Alongside me is Greg Sterrick. You know, if you looked at this game several weeks ago, you'd say, what kind of a game would it be? These two teams were picked for 7 and 8, but they're proving their detractors wrong. Well, JP, both ball clubs are playing very well. Bradley got off to a rough start, went 1 and 9, playing very well now. They got the record up to 7 and 8. And what can you say about Indiana State? Tate Slock has really brought the program around. Basketball is back at Indiana State. Well, Tate is pushing the right buttons, Greg, because he really has 98% of last year's team that will penetrator, but the real key, eliminate those second and third opportunities for Bradley on the glass. And how about the Bradley Braves? They've got a great home record here. They've won 81% of their games at Carver. Well, it's tough to play when you come in here to uh, play against Bradley. Bradley's got to do a good job from the outside. Need a real strong performance out of Stucky and White from the outside. Also inside play. Don't forget about Xanthus Houston. Uh, you hear about Luke Jackson, but Houston's got to be a force in the ball game. Also, also stay out of foul problems. They only play with six players. Don't send Indiana State to the line. They lead the Missouri Valley in free throw percentage. Well, one of the key players is Andy Bastock. On the other side, we talked about him at the top. Eight consecutive games, he's had double figures, so he's really benefited by the increased playing time. Oh, he's played excellent for him, and he's a real key in the ball game. You know, it's a player you don't expect to come in and give you a real lift scoring-wise, but he's done just that for the Bradley Braves. Well, after a slow start, Bradley trying to maintain a role against a tough Indiana State team. We'll meet the players for both teams when we come back to Peoria. We're on time to check in with public address announcer Paul Herzog for the starting lineups. Featuring the Sycamores of Indiana State University and your Bradley Braves. And now the starting lineups. At a forward for Indiana State, a 6'3 senior from Paris, Illinois, number 45, Ron Cheatham. Another forward from Indiana State, a 6'4 junior from French Lick, Indiana, 42, Eddie Bird. At center for the Sycamores, a 6'8 sophomore from Decatur, Indiana, 43, Luke Gross. The guards for the Sycamores, a 6'2 junior from St. Louis, 23, Dwayne Brown. And the other guard, a 5'9 junior from Kingston, Massachusetts, number 10, Rob Vickers. The coach of the Indiana State Sycamores, Kate Slock, in his first season. And now, stand up and greet your Bradley Braves. And a forward to 6'7 sophomore from Lorraine, Ohio, 42, Andy Basta. And a forward to 6'9 sophomore from Taft, Oklahoma, 21, Santa Houston. At center, the team captain, a 6'8 senior from Springfield, Illinois, 53, the guard for Bradley, a 6'1 freshman from Peoria Central, 14, Charles White. And the other guard, a 6'1 junior from Peoria Manual, 32, Curtis Stuckey. And the coach of the Bradley Braves in his fourth season, Stan Albeck, your Bradley Braves. The new look Stan Albeck no longer is his hair perm. So Stan and the Braves are 7 and 11 going up against the Sycamores. They come in with a 7 and 8 record. The game when we come back. White, Xanthus Houston. Off the tip, Bradley leads in the all-time series 20 to 9. They've won six straight as well. Right side, it'll be Dwayne Brown for the Sycamores. Keep him outside the bird. He's been playing as a sixth man. He's in the starting lineup to give away. Stucky off to the races. 
Curtis Bucket has the first two for Bradley. Good quick hoop for Bradley, a good start for Bradley. Very important when you're playing against Indiana State, JP, get out of the blocks very early. Eddie Bird, down low, here's Brown with a pump fake, goes up strong, and it gets the roll, Dwayne Brown, the only player to play for the start in every one of the Sycamore games this year. They've used eight different lineups. Charles White, freshman point guard to Luke Jackson, fast stock. He's been on a roll, 16 points a game his last eight. Started out the air with four points a game in his first 10. Houston now to Jackson. Being picked up by Cheatham. Again, it's Stuckey. Even though Stuckey's not the point guard, they want to put it in his hands as often as they can. Yeah, Indiana State, in a man-to-man -man defense, it's a very soft man-to-man, -man, and they really pack it down low. It's great weak side help defense by Indiana State. Stuckey is short from three. Gross, their top rebounder, makes a nice save on that far court line. Coming back the other way, Rob Vickers with a pass in. Now, Dwayne Brown doesn't get the roll. A rebound attempt is good. And Gross is on the board. 4-2 Indiana State with the lead, early. Opening half of play here in Peoria. Charles White, outside to Jackson. Jackson a strong inside player, but because of their inexperience, he comes out a lot more from the corner. The miss from White, and there's Gross with his second big rebound. Well, on Indiana State's defense, giving Bradley the shot from the outside. They're taking away the inside game of Jackson and Houston early here in the ball game. Well, that was a Stan Albeck concern yesterday, Greg. He was saying that uh, with their perimeter shooting, they needed to have a strong game against Indiana State. He was fearful of that. Here's Burke, strong from the outside. They're going to give him three. Eddie Burke. Good ball movement by Indiana State. Patient on the offensive end. A nice pick set for Bird. Bird off the pick, hit the three-pointer. Bird's a 40-pointer, 40 40-percenter, 40 I should say, from three-point range. White down low on the pass. Houston with a pump. Misses the rebound is Bastock. Andy Bastock just averaging under 10 points per game, but that'll go up based on his double figures in eight straight. Well, they call him the garbage man, but the case there was in point. Really worked hard on the offensive boards. He got the rebound. Eddie Bird's jumper from 15, so he's hot. Canning his last couple, and it's a 9-4 Indiana State lead. They're up by five. Indiana State known more for their defense this year under Tate Slot. They've shaved almost 15 points per game off of what they gave up a year ago. That's an incredible turnaround, especially when you consider there's only two players on this team that were not with last year's club. White in the paint. Out of control. Rebound. Had his own and missed. Gross fights for it. And they're going to give the ball right there to Bradley. Good hustling play that time by White. Quick after the basketball and just slapped it back in off of Gross. And Substitution already for Tate Lock. Cheatham will get a breather. And he's going to be replaced by Bubba Burridge, who started in eight straight games before sitting out with the flu, just getting back to full strength. Jackson, nice dish. Houston went up, counted, and he was fouled. Jackson, very unselfish there. He had an easy one, I thought. Well, Jackson, a nice look inside to Houston. That's the inside strength for Bradley. Getting a look at Jackson there. Looked like he had the shot. Great look inside. Basketball to Houston. Vickers back, bothering him a little bit. Houston very strong. And the physical strength of Bradley is going to be a real factor in the ballgame, JP. Houston is at the line for one, trying to make it a three-point play. Houston averaging 10 points a game. Not strong, though, as you can see at the free throw line. Doesn't get it there in gross. That's his third rebound. Coming back the other way is Vickers. Now to Eddie Berg with Stuckey picking him up. These two guards play better man-to-man -man defense, according to Stan Albeck, than they do in the zone. Here's Bird. He's got three more. Eddie Bird with eight points. He's been averaging almost 15 a game. And usually they're getting those kind of points from him off the bench, but he's starting today. You think that means he kind of likes starting uh, a starting assignment? He's coming off a ball game against Southern Illinois on Thursday night where he had 21 points, his best effort of the year. Down low on the baseline. I keep getting screened out by one of the officials. Houston went up and missed. We'll have to see who that foul is on underneath. We're looking at Eddie Bird, 42. Eddie Bird committing the foul. Bastock goes up with a shot, but once again, Bradley on the offensive glass. Bastock, Houston right there, takes it right back, tries to get the easy stick back, and early in the ballgame, Bradley really going to work on the offensive boards. Six-point lead for the visitors. Down to five as Houston makes that free throw. Along with his 10 points this year, he's been getting six rebounds a game. 
He's not been very consistent, though, for Bradley. When he's on, he's very strong. He can dominate. He had 14 rebounds in one game last year against UNCC. Vickers in the backcourt coming out. Some pressure, but they relieved it to Brown. Sycamores bring it out to Vickers. Dwayne Brown, maybe their most athletic player. Now to Gross, in some trouble. The bounce pass Vickers. Stucky will pick him up. Outside Brown behind the screen, and then Bastog did a good job to fight it off. Dwayne Brown again to the cutting bird, the turnaround jumper. That one looked good too. But it won't roll for the Sycamores. Down by four, here comes Bradley as Burr hits the deck. Stucky to White, swapped away. Burr with a great recovery, he's open. Vickers couldn't find him. Tough break, that fast break was there, was on. Vickers now trying to switch to Bird, gives instead to Brown. There's Bird coming off a double screen, trying to bring it in, he walked, I thought. Yes, he did. And the officials looking at each other as if to say, right, we're in agreement, that's a good call. We've got an official's timeout on the floor. 15 minutes and 18 seconds still to play in the first half. And Bird, after saying yesterday uh, that Eddie has done so well as a sixth man, but we're told that Inman did not have a good shooting night the other night, and we wanted to use, I would think, Eddie's capabilities, his leadership, his experience rather than have Inman come out and maybe struggle early again against the team on the road. Well, Bird's responded pretty well, J.P. He's got eight of the 12 points, and Indiana State out of the blocks very quickly. Field goal shooting, Indiana State five of seven, and Bird's done most of that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Bird's numbers are today, and if Pates will keep him in the starting lineup if we go back to six men. That's a tough role to play six men, but Bird has been exceptional at it. Off a rebound, we've got a foul underneath, and Dwayne Brown doesn't believe the call, but it looks like it's going that way. Well, instead, they're going to give it underneath the Vickers. Houston with a shot from the outside. It was hard off the glass and a real battle on the inside. Bastock, once again, you know, they call him the garbage man. He's always around the basketball, doing a good job keeping it alive, and Bradley gets the basketball. Three fouls in the Sycamores, none on the Braves. Is Stuckey plays it to White. White was normally a forward. His shooting percentage is very low. It's in the high 30s, but he was normally closer to the basket in high school. Oh, the buzzer went off, but the shot clock says 33, so i got to think that's inadvertent. And it's not going off. <laughs> Greg, shut that horn. Almost was like it was somebody's alarm clock yeah. here for an 11 o'clock start. Yeah, <laughs> we need that. Tate Block's coming over. Now Stan Albeck's going to come over and say, guys, we're awake. What's going on? What's going on? We don't need that clock going off like that. Shot clock is right, says Tate Block. I don't know if you can pick up that audio or not. Good look at Stan all back there. You know, that's the, uh, well, this league's got some good coaches, but there's two good ones in this ball game today. Tate's Lock and also uh, Stan all back. Both of them, a lot of good experience there, both in college and in the NBA. Oh, and they're fun guys, too. They yes. like to have a good time, and they yes, sir. really can motivate basketball players, and uh, Tate's Lock and Stan all back doing, a, doing an excellent job for their ball clubs this year. White will inbound it, it looks like, underneath the basket. White next year after they get some recruits in and maybe perhaps even get an injured player back. They're not sure whether or not uh, Dion Butler will be able to come back, but he may be back at a, maybe a number three position or at a, as a backup number two guard, but he probably won't play the point next year. Jackson on the outside. Stuckey. Stuckey wasn't even eligible until December 14th. He's a transfer from Drake, but they're a different team with him in the lineup and with Bastock hitting. He has four points. Hey. Bastock, after a, a freshman year in which uh, the numbers weren't strong, but he didn't have that many minutes, is now coming into his own. Vickers for the Sycamores, a 12-10 game. It was a six-point lead at one point for the Sycamores. Dwayne Brown, low to Gross. I thought he walked, it's sort of the crowd on the baseline. Vickers will hit it for three. Vickers has been a 40% shooter from three-point range, so that's been a help. They've hit a couple of threes already. And they lead the Valley in three-point shooting and in free-throw shooting. On the baseline, White was there. Missed that shot, but there was a foul underneath. So the Sycamores will be guilty of their fourth foul. Good look by Houston, gets the ball to White. A good quick move, really accelerates on the baseline. And Brown picked up the personal foul, but good ball movement by Bradley on the offensive end and adjusted to changing defenses of Indiana State. Indiana State's giving him a look of a, a soft man-to-man, -man, also a little zone defense also here early in the ballgame. White at the free throw line makes a count. 
You know, Charles White, last year in high school, his team lost one game. They were 32-1, and I'm not so sure that's a loss. In triple overtime in the championship? I mean, you know there's a loser in that game, but how bad do you consider yourself a loser in triple overtime? Well, I bet the team that won can remember that they yeah. won. Yeah, that's right. They <laughs> celebrated a little bit more. Vickers will bring it up. Travis Inman getting ready to check back into the lineup. He had hit in double figures five straight games for the Sycamores and then only had five against a very good Southern Illinois squad on Thursday night. Down low to Gross. Denied at the baseline by White. And now we're going to see Inman coming in. Good outside shooting sophomore. And it looks like he's going to replace Eddie Bird. Gives him a lift. Another player that can shoot from the outside when Inman's in the ball game. Oh, Brown hits for two. Wow. Dwayne Brown give him four points, and it's a six-point lead again. Second time in the first half that the Sycamores have led in it. Jackson. Remember, Bradley had the two-to-nothing start on the turnover from Bird, and Stucky win. There's the big man, Houston. He has six points. Vickers will bring it up now for the Sycamores, who lost 17 straight games last year. Couldn't buy a win once they had four victories locked up. This year, not only do they have seven wins, but there were games that they played hard enough and well enough in the win, including Thursday night, but ended up losing. In the paint to Burridge, and Burridge drew a foul. It'll be played out of bounds. Jackson committing his first foul. No, Jackson used to get in a lot of foul trouble early in his career, and he was getting into some this year. They've switched to a zone. They play him up at the point, so he's less vulnerable, and vulnerable to pick up those fouls inside. Yeah, excuse me, JP, but he hasn't had all those problems, and when you're only playing six players, they can't afford for anybody to get foul problems. Vickers with it. Now to Inman. Travis Inman. Around and out. He was called the other night. And they've got a Jackson foul, it looks like, and Tate's lock is up applauding that. I don't blame him because if it's on Jackson, that's two in a row. Shot goes up from the outside by Inman. Did everything but go through the basket. Look at the hustle by Gross on the inside and the box out by Jackson and Houston. He must have got uh, Jackson on the foul. On the jumper, Brown around and out. Houston on the rebound. Coming back the other way, Charles White. He'll slow things down, 17-13. Bradley and a foul on Dwayne Brown. Okay, Bradley, you can remember them from years past. They loved to run with the ball. They had Horsey Hawkins. Even before that, Jim Les was a good point guard. Then they had last year Anthony Manuel. They'll take the run if they can find it now, but they don't run as much because of their inexperience at point guard. They don't recognize the breaks as they develop like they did in the past. Here comes Vickers. To Inman on the baseline, a soft one-hander. Will give Inman a couple of points, and this is another six-point lead. That's a transition basket that time by Indiana State. They really took advantage of Bradley not getting back quick on the defensive end. And nice acrobatic shot. Inman got the two-pointer. Less than 12 minutes to play. First half. Stuckey will drive it in. Pop up from 15 is no good. Rebound. There's Bastock. Well, if you want to call it garbage, that's fine. He's got six points. Every team could use a garbage man. And that's been Bradley's best offense here in the first half. Put it up from the outside and crash the offensive boards. And Tate's Lock said yesterday we've got to minimize their shots, give them one shot. But that was too many. Gross was blocked by Houston. I thought Brown walked before it. So Houston commits the foul. 19-15. Nice look, though. A nice dish down low by Brown. Brown, a penetrator, went up for the shot and dished it down low to, to Gross. Good catch by Gross. Gross was fouled on the play. And it's Indiana State enjoying a four-point lead, 19-15. Luke Gross at the line for Indiana State. He's almost a 70% free throw shooter. Greg Thomas, the freshman point guard, getting ready to check into the lineup for the Sycamores. Gross at the line, will get the roll. So Luke Gross now has a total of three points. He's only been averaging four points, but he's done a good job on the boards. Vickers comes out, and Thomas comes in. They like Thomas for the future, but he's getting a lot of quality playing time as a freshman. And Vickers did a good job running the offense, I thought, here uh, for Indiana State. Gross missed it, but there was a whistle. It's a lane violation. Bastock got in the lane too soon. Those hurt, although maybe not so much this early in the ball game. 
to mental error. I think Stucky was in there also, JP, and uh, also we're getting a look at seeing uh, Jay Shell for Bradley, and he can light you up from the outside. A good three-point shooter. They call him the zone buster, and as an official's time out of the field, we'll see if he busts that zone perhaps when we come back. Right now, it's Bradley, the home team on the losing end. It's 21-15. Sycamores have led almost all the way. That's that for you. That could be a key. The offensive rebounds. Bradley with a big edge. Stucky to Luke Jackson. Shell down low. Houston with a power move, and he was stripped of the ball from that collapsing defensive Thomas. Exactly right, JP. Indiana State does such a good job turning and going to the basketball when it goes inside. And that was the case there. They collapsed and created the turnover. There's Greg Thomas. Oh, nice bounce pass to Inman, and he walked. Tough break there for Inman because Thomas did a nice job. Well, the pass was there, JP, and good look there at Tate's lock. And sometimes when the passer gives the basketball to you, you've got to be able to do something with it. The pass looked good, but when Inman caught the ball, it wasn't anywhere for him to go. So it was not really that good of a pass to Inman that time. Jackson from Stuckey. Speaking of not a good pass, they want Jackson to handle the ball more this year. It's because of that inexperience at point guard. Last year, he'd fill the lanes, he'd play down low, but you had Manuel. This year, because he's such a strong passer, although you wouldn't tell right there, they like the ball in Luke's hands out, out at the top. Here's Dwayne Brown behind the screen. That should be a good one for Inman. He's got three more. A total of five. Tate Locke has to be happy. Inman hitting that jump from the outside. He was real cold against SIU. Played very tight. Only two of 12 from the field against SIU on Thursday. This is the biggest lead of the day for Indiana State. And so far, breakfast at Bradley, they can't like what's on the menu. A nine-point lead for the Sycamores. Indiana State, excellent defensive team. Defense creates turnovers. They've done just that the last two times down the floor. And we've got Burridge. Burridge off the ball. And you, I don't know if you can pick up what the referee said, but I think Tate Locke may have said something on the bench, or maybe he just gave that pose, and the referee said, I told him twice. Yeah, it was just a moving pick. Indiana State uses a lot of down picks, and even they like to pick up high for the point guard, and that was the case there, Burridge with the pick. There's the run. Indiana State in just under three minutes. Shell outside, now Jackson down low. Houston put it up, and a foul underneath. And we'll check it out for you, but that's going to be the seventh foul on the Sycamores. Another good look to the inside. Bradley's bread and butter is taking it inside. And good look that time by Jackson. It was a good pass that time by Jackson. Gets it inside to Houston. And Houston very strongly takes it up to the glass and fouled on the play. And didn't get the shot to go, but he's in line to shoot two. Townsend Harris getting ready to check in as Houston cans the first one. You know, we talked about the foul trouble on one side. of clock just does a good job, though, utilizing all of his bench, J.P. So he's got seven players that have averaged 20 minutes or more per game, and he told me normally with his teams he likes to have about eight players. So he does get everybody in there. Quite a contrast to Stan Albeck this year, but Stan doesn't really have that experience on the bench. They didn't get it over, did they? In the 10 seconds, that's some great Bradley pressure. Pressure defense by Bradley. It wasn't man-to-man -man pressure. It was a trapping type of a defense. Three-quarter court, a little one-two-two press, and Indiana State had problems adjusting to it. Sometimes that pressure defense can dictate tempo also, JP, and Bradley like to get this ball game a little more up-tempo. Stucky to Shell. He can hit it for three if they give it to him. Houston had it slapped away and then off of his hands. So a tough defense there by Brown. That's nice to get a turnover back when you've given one up like that. Yeah, and Bradley's had their share of turnovers, J.P. Bradley already with five turnovers. Five each. And the points off turnovers, though Bradley has some. Indiana State does not. Here is Inman. Down low, he wanted Harris, and a foul on Jay Shell. Now, both of these teams have more turnovers than Wayne Brown. will kick it outside to Greg Thomas. Stuckey right on top. 24 to 17, a seven-point Sycamore lead. They had trailed early, 2-0, but that's been about it. Burns trying to force that one up. And it's either Stuckey or Houston committing the foul. He's sandwiched right between both of them. White. White. Foul is going to be on Houston, and now he has two. So one of the things that you said at the top is turning out to be fairly prophetic, although Stan Albeck doesn't like it. They're in some foul trouble with the big men. Bradley's starting to get some foul problems, and Stan Albeck's having to utilize a lot of different... Uh, People. One thing you can do, though, with just playing only six players, those players can interchange a lot of different positions, so it's not like he uh, doesn't have anybody to fill positions. Burridge will miss the first free throw. Burridge got off to a slow start this year, but then can 19 of his next 23 from the line. 
So he's gotten into a groove. I was going to say until today. Burridge's first point. And Jay Shell is down. I didn't see whether he had slipped on maybe something. Was there a, a wet spot there, perhaps? I think he took a shot to the face, maybe across Ooh. the bridge of the nose on the play. Well, we're told he got poked in the eye. I thought they were ready to inbound, and then I saw him down in the court, so it must have happened right off of that play. We'll have a chance to look at it again. Yeah, Houston got him with an elbow. It looked like it got him in the throat. I first thought it caught him across the nose, but uh, I think he got uh, an elbow, and it, and it was from his own player battling on the inside. Houston trying to battle inside against Townsend Harris, and just caught him with the left arm and, and the elbow, and yeah. got him right in the throat. That's uh, pretty those painful. Are, those are sharp elbows, especially when it hits you there in the throat. And trainer Bill McGee walking off Jay Shell. When Deion Butler went out for the year, then Roman Beach transferred. That hurt. Here's Jackson looking for Bastock down low. Jackson so far with no points. I don't think he's taking a shot. Stucky, the turnaround jumper against Thomas. He's not hitting either. And they're taking the penetration game away from Stucky. And Stucky with only two points here in the ballgame. 8.53 left. Eight-point advantage for Indiana State. Greg, how are they doing that? How are they taking it away from Stucky? They're just, they're just, it's a soft man to man, JP, and they just take it away from him. Brown with a miss, and there's Bastock. That was a Tate's lot concern about stopping the penetrating guards. There's White coming through. Now he'll bring it out, try to set something up for the Braves. Braves trail here by eight. There's Jackson. Everybody getting a turn. Bastock baseline. Well, when in doubt, I think give it to Bastock. Last year when they gave it to him, they didn't know what was going to happen. And in fact, he didn't get enough minutes to do anything. But this year, he's been one of their key players, yeah. especially the last eight games. Brown nowhere to go. Tough being from Houston and Bastock. Stuckey will take it back. The deficit is six for Bradley. Sycamores have led virtually all the way. And Jackson faked then gave it to Stuckey. He put him in a bad spot. I'm wondering why Jackson is so hesitant to shoot. Well, Jackson appears to be on the man. And it, it's, when I say a soft man to man, it gives you the same principles of his own defense. Stuckey will be at the line. He's been an awesome free throw shooter, but he missed there. He hit 38 of his last 39 free throw attempts, and uh, he was shooting 84% on the year. Yeah, he can't do better than that. In the Valley, his percentage is up in the 90s. There's Cheatham, who's back into the lineup. The only senior on this squad, Thomas. Well, hit it. Oh, that's pretty good for Greg Thomas. It looked like he had nowhere to go. Oh, it was an excellent decision, though. He got it inside in the paint area and didn't have anybody to pass the basketball. The defense dropped off of him, and Thomas hit the jumper. Thomas is only a freshman. He's going to be a good point guard for Indiana State. 27-19, an eight-point edge. It belongs to the Sycamores. Here's Bastock outside. Jay Shell getting ready to check back into the lineup. From the baseline, the jumper no good from Jackson. Underneath, it is put up. Give it to Bastock. Once again, offensive rebound. Bradley going to boards real hard. Again, the best offense. Shot from the outside. Work hard on the offensive glass. Get the easy stick back. Nine straight games if you're counting with us for Bastock in double figures. Here's Inman on his drive in the paint. The running one-hander. He'll miss the roll. And Jackson will take it down. Down by six. And every time Bradley gets it down to six, Sycamores get a big basket after a Bradley miss. So we'll see if they can cut it here. Jackson will miss. A scramble for it. There's Greg Thomas, very feisty. Try to put it down. And a foul on Jackson. What's he doing even close enough to get a foul in that situation? And Jackson was playing with two personal fouls. That's a third personal foul on Luke Jackson. Just a battle for the basketball. Thomas going after it, Townsend Harris. And Thomas comes up with it. Stucky's right on him, putting a lot of pressure on him. And Thomas looking for a place to land it. No question about it. Jackson over the top, picked up his third personal foul. I still don't think he should be there with two fouls and the ball right where it was. There was enough support there. It's 27 to 21. The six-point lead is not the big story for Indiana State. All away, making believers out of some of the skeptics in the Valley. Look at the field goal percentages. 
You're going to win games if you can shoot 63, but can they maintain that great? Well, Indiana State with a hot hand early in the ball game, they've done a good job executing on the half court, and Bradley really needs to turn it up a notch on the defensive end because Indiana State's got some very easy shots. I shouldn't say can they maintain it, I should say how long can they maintain it. This is a team that shoots in the low 40s. Cheatham. Thomas in some trouble, will bring it out. Shot clock down to 14, I don't recall it being that low so far. Down to 5.55, left in the first half, 27-21. They're not aware of that shot clock. Inman outside, down low, knocked away. Stuckey, coming back. They'll penetrate against Inman, the easy layup. Curtis Stuckey, not too fancy there, he wanted the two. Well, the Stuckey gets the two-pointer, but it was the defense on the half court that really set it all up. Coming back on the right side, Cheatham. Inman. Down low, and a nice cut by Brown, but he walked. Or maybe he ran. 27-23, again, here's a chance for Bradley. They've narrowed it down to four. Let's see what they do here. They've taken Jackson out during that last stoppage, and that has Stan Albeck obviously concerned. Well, that means Jay Shell is going to have to really respond and contribute some points here in the ballgame if Bradley expects to win. Well, Houston's done a good job so far, and they need more of him. And if Stuckey can catch fire on that one-handed baseline jumper, Bradley will be in better shape. And that was the penetration that Tate Locke very concerned about as Stuckey. And a foul is going to be called on Shell as he tried to double-team on the trap with 5-0-3 to go. But I'll tell you, Bradley has cut a nine-point lead down to a couple. And would you have thought that they could have done that with Jackson with well, King? Bradley in the last four minutes. This is an 87% free throw shooter. He is number one in the Missouri Valley Conference High School at Speedway High School in Indianapolis. He shot 95% from the line. Jinx. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that. You missed. You made a miss. Coming back the other way now is White. That's a great uh, free throw percentage. And we're talking a freshman. A lot of those free throws have been made on the road, too, in tough circumstances. Stuckey missed. He had gotten his last couple. Coming back, here's Thomas. A three-point lead. Travis Inman on the cut, but he missed. Rebound, Townsend Harrison. He missed. Some easy chances for the Sycamores. Bastock went over the top and fouled him. That'll only be Bastock's first foul, but Tate Locke wants it to be a bit more accurate when they have chances like that. But Tate Locke up applauding the effort right there. Townsend Harris, what a job on the offensive glass. Sure can't fault him for effort. Just keeps going after it, going after it one more time, and then he gets the rebound, and he's fouled on the play, and Townsend Harris is going to be at the line for Indiana State. He's a 50% free throw shooter, but that's not fair to judge him. He's only had six shots, make it seven, and now he's three for seven. Indiana State's such a young ball club, J.P. Tate Locke really feels like once he can instill that mental toughness into this ball club, they're really going to improve. This guy's just a sophomore. And even though they look so improved, Tate's will tell you that it's, it's not a one-year job. Their self-esteem is very low. They've had nine straight losing seasons. Granted, it's different players, but the image of Indiana State basketball was on its way down. He's really revitalized it. But they're getting 5,000-plus fans in every game now. On the free throw line, Indiana State has been five for eight as Harris made one of those, and they're looking Travis Inman's way. Into the end, just leaving his man and going inside to give some help on the inside on Houston. Shot taken is good by Houston. He has a total of nine points. He was recruited pretty heavily by other Missouri Valley Conference schools and also drew some attention from the Big Eight. He's in double figures with 10. He's just a sophomore from Oklahoma. Shooting free throws pretty well, too, J.P., six or seven from that line. But he was 53% coming in, so <laughs> he's having a nice day. What's going on? Stan Albeck is up. 10-second call. That's her second one. So the young team not reacting well twice to that pressure. Oh, Indiana State really rattled up in the full court, going against the full court pressure defense. It's a zone press, but a good play by Houston goes on the floor after basketball, slaps it away, and the ball belongs to Bradley. And Indiana State now is going to play a little 1-2-2 two, two zone, and that was a concern of Stan Allback, how well they would shoot against that zone from the outside. You're wondering where the 10 seconds went. A lot of it was when that ball was loose on the floor. 
3.59 to go, and it's a two-point deficit now. This is the first time that Bradley has a chance to either tie or go ahead since they led it 2 to nothing very early. He's got 20 of the 29 points. Well, Bastock with 10 points, and Houston has responded and come alive on the inside, also knocking down some free throws. It's been a 12 to 5 Bradley run in the last six minutes, JP. Bastock 5 for 6 from the field, and only one of those from the outside. The rest were the easy layup, but they all count. Here's Shell for 3, and he was short. That would have given them the lead. Coming back is Vickers. To the outside now for Thomas. A very young Indiana State team, only one senior in Cheatham. So Tate Slock will have these players back, plus some very promising recruits, I'm told. Play continues as Vickers hit the deck. Tate Slock is up. Here's a nice move underneath by Cheatham. And a foul is going to be called underneath on Bastock. Two-shot foul. So Indiana State, the top free throw shooting team in the NBC will be at the line. Nice move by Cheatham. Cheatham gives him some leadership, JP. He's a senior, good drive, found a little seam in the defense, put the ball in his left hand. Nice strong move to the hoop by Cheatham. He's a clutch player and look for him to go to Cheatham when they really need a hoop down on the offense end, especially with Eddie Bird on the bench. Well, Cheatham's been averaging 11 points a game over his last three, but he's also averaging 22 minutes in his last five after starting out the year playing only eight minutes. So Tate's lot going for that senior leadership. And now Houston gets a breather and Scott Behrens will come in. He's a 6'8 freshman, almost weighs in at 200 pounds. He's from Bartonville, Illinois. Cheatham at the line. He'll try to make two when he does. So Ron Cheatham is on the board for the first time today. 3.27 to go, first half, and it's a four-point lead for the Sycamores. White outside to Stuckey. Down low to Bastock, and a foul called on Cheatham on the baseline. So for Ron Cheatham, that should be his first personal foul. They're already in the bonus anyway. Bastock posted up down low, and you know, that's tough when you find yourself playing behind down on those low blocks, and Cheatham trying to fight over the top and front. Bastock down low picked up the personal foul. So Bastock will be at the line. He's been a 64% free throw shooter. Last year he was a starter and lost his job and one of the reasons why you lose a job he was only shooting 37% from the field. It's amazing what happens when you start playing with a little confidence isn't it? The coach has that confidence and he leaves you in there. That's what it is. I think some people do very well as you know as a freshman others really have a tough year all around making that adjustment but their sophomore year they come alive. They beat it that time. I thought you were going to get ready to catch that ball was coming your way. I wasn't worried about the ball. It was Bastock I was yeah. worried about. <laughs> I was more worried about you committing a turnover. <laughs> Here's Cheatham. On his drive against Bastock. Swatted away by Burns, but nobody picked up the trailing Harris. Great rebound. And that had the Sycamore's bench up and applauding as White will take it back down. A 33-28 game. Five-point lead off a tip. And it stays Bradley's way. Tate Slock returning as a head coach. He's had several collegiate stops, had a tour in the NBA. The last couple of years was Bob Knight's assistant coach, and ironically, Knight was his assistant when Tate started back in Army several years ago. There's the outside from Shell. We're going to count it, and a foul. He can make this four points. So the zone buster, Shell, on the board. And you know what, he's been shooting 50% from three-point land in his last four games. Right. Shell drawing the traffic right there from Cheatham. Perfect, perfect jumper from the outside. Shoulders squared up. Nice release to the basketball. Shell an excellent shooter from three-point range, and that time a long-range bomb. And Shell got nothing but the bottom of the net, looking for a four-point play. And doesn't have to look anymore. Shell's got it. He has a total of four points now as the Sycamores come up and Bradley picks up their press. Vickers gets over the line, gets around Durrance. Around a couple of players as White slipped off a pick from Harris. Vickers will bring it back out against White to Thomas. Cheatham, no shot there against Bastock. Now to Inman. Everybody getting a turn with it. Sycamores try to work it around. Inman forced it and he was short. Looked like he hesitated, changed his mind. White will come back. A chance to go up. From the outside, Bastock. First lead since it was 2-0 for Bradley. Give Bastock 13 points. 
34, 33. Braves are up. Deflected off the leg of White. He put in play now by Inman with a new shot clock. Batter really warming up from the outside. Big baskets by Shell, and that time from the outside by Bastock. Inman. Now it's Cheatham. Working it around to the outside. Indiana State. They've had the lead most of this game. Oh, Thomas, nice work. Greg Thomas, the freshman, asserting himself there. Tough shot, too, by Thomas. A little leaner in traffic. 35-34, one-point lead. Sycamores here. Stucky. Oh, two whistles in there. They should have Vickers before the shot. Before the shot, Rob Vickers is second. So Rob Vickers will have a couple of fouls on him. Yeah, that's when Stucky's at his best right there, when he's able to penetrate. Found that lane area wide open, Stucky quick to the hoop, and Stucky excellent quickness, a junior, a transfer uh, from Drake, and really has helped this ball club since he's become eligible, JP. Stucky will make it. But they didn't really have a, a two guard without Stucky being here. They had different lineup combinations, but they didn't really have that man that could be explosive and score a lot of points from the backcourt. Yeah, they were looking for that firepower, and he's done just that, averaging better than 22 points per ball game. Stucky hits the free throw. In fact, he hasn't played in enough games, otherwise he'd be leading the Valley in scoring. Has to play in 75%, he's about at 61% of their games. I'll tell you, Ron Cheatham was wide open. It's a hell ball. And we're on the same side as the alternate possession clock, but we can tell by the way the players are going, but Bradley's got the ball. Well, yeah, once Bradley turned it up that notch on the defensive end, that's been the difference. The defense has set, set the stage for Bradley's uh, good offense here in about the last seven or eight minutes of the half. And Cheatham was wide open, but they didn't recognize it or it's an easy layup. Burns, outside. Stuckey to White. Hasn't shot much this half. Misses there, and now Vickers will come back. Not a good percentage shot that time for White. 36-35, Bradley up by one. Inman. Outside now to Cheatham. We've not seen Eddie Bird in a while, which is surprising. No, he only played six and a half minutes to start the ball game. He scored 80 of the first 12 points, but he's been on the bench the rest of the half. Coming back, Vickers. The thought was out of control, but they've got a foul earlier on Stuckey. Stan Albeck may not agree with it. What a colorful coach he is. He's been around for several years with several different teams. And Vickers a good drive there, and that's when the defense really breaks down, JP, when, when that guard can penetrate. That was the case there. Vickers a good penetration move. Bradley defense had to collapse, and Vickers was fouled on the play. Burridge comes back in, and Dwayne Brown comes in as well. Inman checks out. Now we talked before about Stan Albeck. He returned to his alma mater. This is his school, Bradley, and they brought him in during a tough time. They had been on probation, and he revitalized things back here. Last year, they had a losing record for the first, for the fourth time in 40 years. He's really turned things back up in a positive note here for Bradley. I agree with everything you said, JP, except he also knew he had Hersey Hawkins. <laughs> oh, he did? You think that was a factor? <laughs> Percy, by the way, named the player of the decade in the Valley, and he's doing quite well, thank you, with Philadelphia in the NBA. Well, the last three years, Bradley's had the leading score in the Missouri Valley. Hawk for two years, Hawkins and Anthony Manuel last year. Possibility Stuckey might lead it this year. Six seconds left, Stuckey will miss there, and Vickers pulls it down. Down to two seconds, got to let it go, and he was not aware of how much time was left, but I'll tell you what, Indiana State will do well to take any kind of a lead into the dressing room at halftime. It's always tough to win on the road, especially the ball game of the week here at halftime. Creighton has Chad Gallagher up there. Look at Stucky, what he's done since he's come into Bradley. And there's some players at Southern Illinois that are fighting for recognition. A lot of outstanding scorers, JP, in the league. And Gallagher, uh, Harstead's not mentioned, but he's an also an outstanding scorer, too, for Creighton. Creighton, an excellent ball club. Jones and Mayan doing an excellent job for SIU. Leading rebounders, Sam Rourke at 11 rebounds per ball game. Jerry Jones right behind at 10. Rick Shipley, also a great rebounder. Lance Jackson is the big man in foul trouble. He has three, but it didn't seem to affect Bradley. If anything, they came back stronger, cut the lead, and then took the lead. Well, after Jackson picked up those three personal fouls, someone had to pick up the slack. Jay Shell hit a big basket, JP. Hit a three-pointer. It was a rainbow. He was fouled on the play, turned it into a four-point play, but foul problems are a problem. Jackson playing with three personal fouls. Jackson was 
a no-show offensively also, J.P. Jackson didn't mark as far as the scoring any points for Bradley in the first. Three players are all tied with five points for Indiana State. On the Bradley side, it's not what you'd call balanced scoring. Only Charles White, who has one point, has a point out of everyone else on that Bradley team. So they've had four players get most of the points, and Charles White has had only one point on a free throw. But we talked about Bastock and Houston being real factors in the ball game, and they respond. White, Bradley in the red and white. Outside Brown, now to Eddie Bird. Not played since the first six or seven minutes of that first half. Nice cut, Luke Gross. On a good backdoor play. Nice look, though, by Eddie Bird. Eddie Bird draws the traffic. Always looks like he's going to put it up from the outside, drops it down low, and Gross got the easy two-pointer. Graves with it. Starting out this half, Jackson is out there playing with three personal fouls. You see how his game is affected. He was not really a factor at all in that first half of play. Fast dock. Stucky. Stucky, the pull-up jumper, that's no good. Bastock fought for the rebound, but there's Dwayne Brown. Yeah, good job by Brown checking off the backboards, and Brown comes away with the rebound. Coming back, Thomas outside now to Dwayne Brown, the junior from St. Louis. Eddie Bird driving in. The pull-up jumper from 16 is no good, and there's Stucky on the rebound. This Bradley team has some balanced rebounding. Stucky at times is Leatherman rebounds. White can't hit. And now Thomas will take it. Still a lead here for Indiana State, although they built it up to three at one point, Greg. Remember, it was a nine-point edge for the Sycamores. Indiana State really doing the job on the glass, J.P. They led the board war in the first half, 17 to 13. Here in the second half, they got off to a good start. And the rebounding was a concern of both coaches as Jackson pulls one down. Stucky coming back. Outside now to Charles White, freshman point guard. He started in every game. And in three of the last four games, he's played every minute. Stucky has got all kinds of stamina. He hasn't had a breather in the last four games except for a timeout. Jackson outside. Now to Houston. Outside for White. And Charles White will get the basket. A total of three points for White, but that's his first field goal. And he's got to shoot the shot, J.P. They're leaving him wide open. It's an unmolested to jump from about 14 feet. He's got to go ahead and put the shot up. Bradley coming off of a win against MCC opponent Loyola the other night. And even though they scored 71 points, only 17 came from that backcourt. Thomas. Now Brown likes that shot and cans it for three. Dwayne Brown. This team has led the valley in three-point shooting. Nobody picks up White. Now Bradley wanting to pick up the tempo, and that's one way to do it. Beat the defense back down the floor, and White just took it all the way to glass and got the easy two-pointer. Indiana State didn't do a good job getting back on the defensive end. Going back is Thomas. You were at that Indiana State game the other night. They tied it. And Eddie Bird's couple free throws with about eight seconds left. And then Mahan took it all the way up the court as Gross is fouled by Stuckey. We talked before about our keys, our four keys to winning at the top. And let's see, Greg, uh, how this thing holds true. Well, for Bradley, establish some outside scoring. And we just talked about White having to do that from the outside. Inside performance definitely there in the first half with Bastock and also Houston working really hard and Bradley stay out of foul trouble. They had some problems with that. Jackson's playing with three personal fouls, but Bradley's a much better basketball team, JP, just with the presence of Luke Jackson on the floor. Gross, that's a good point because even though he's struggling, you get the feeling that he could be a factor before this one's over. I've not seen him, and I've seen him play several games, be this ineffective, and it was before the fouls, really. Gross at the line. There are his numbers. And he missed, but it was a lane violation. And Jackson stepped in too quickly. The violation was on Luke Jackson. We're talking about uh, Luke Jackson. He really didn't assert himself, did he? Offensively, really wasn't looking for the shot. A couple of nice passes down low, but you know, here's a guy coming into the ball game, averaging 15.4 points per ball game. So Bradley really needs some scoring out of Luke Jackson here in the second half. And a guy that some NBA scouts have started to ask about. Gross will get it. He has eight. If scouts were watching this one, Luke would be losing that battle in terms of recruiting, but I'll tell you what, I think everyone knows that he can play much better than he's shown so far. Who knows, he might even be sick. They don't tell you that before a game. There's a three-second violation. Eddie Bird will inbound it. Oh, Houston was posted up down low, and Jackson had the ball, and Houston was calling for it down the low blocks, and just found himself... Uh, Caught him in there too long in the lane. A three-second call on Xanthus Houston. A four-point Indiana State lead. Trying to snap Bradley's winning streak here of four. 
four consecutive wins after the slow start. Also, they're 6-0 on this floor against Indiana State. Nice move by Burge, but then he was wild on his shot after he had found an opening. Charles White almost walked. Stuckey. Offensive foul. That'll be Stuckey's third. Thomas, just great weak side help. Stuckey and Bird go after the ball. A good drive by Stuckey, a quick move, but the freshman Thomas sacrifices the body, gets the charge, and third personal foul on Stuckey. So Jackson and Stuckey both playing with three personal fouls now for Bradley. This is Thomas to Brown. A four-point lead here for Indiana State. Sycamores have already won more than they did a year ago with seven compared to four last year. Greg Thomas. Part of the problem this team was getting them to believe that they could win. And Tate's Lock has apparently done that. Outside Brown. Eddie Bird. Shot clock reading at 10 now. But it was deflected out of play on that far side. Bradley did a good job on the defensive end, especially out of that man-to-man -man defense. But they looked for Bradley to have to go to a zone defense when uh, Jackson stuck here in foul problems. Time out on the floor. Tate's Lock and company still have there with one exception. When Bradley's made it close, they went ahead, but that's been it. Every other time, it's been Indiana State. Here's Thomas. Forced one up, and he was short. Burge the rebound. Kicks it out to Brown. They've got a new shot clock. Brown outside. Now to Eddie Burke. Trying to... Oh, Jackson. They're going to call it. His fourth foul. And again, I got a question, what he's, what's he doing challenging Bird that far out? Oh, Bradley was still in that man-to-man -man defense, and Jackson jumped off and tried to switch and pick up Eddie Bird after the pick was set for Bird when he jumped out on the, on the play. There's Bird with the ball. See the pick set on White. Jackson tries to leave his man, which was Gross, who set the pick, and Jackson was just late getting there to take away the drive, and Jackson now going to have to leave the ball game, and he picks up his fourth personal foul. Jay Shell checks in now for Bradley. Greg Thomas with it. Looking for the cutting bird. Now he'll drive it into the paint. This is Dwayne Brown. The pull-up jumper off the glass. No good. Rebound Stuckey. Curtis right Stuckey coming right back the other way. Slowing it down now for Bradley. To White. Stuckey, 15-footer, and he buries it. Curtis Stuckey in double figures with 10. And Greg Thomas will take it. I only showed Jackson with one rebound in the first half besides no points. So a tough day all around for Luke Jackson. You know he's a much better player than what he showed out here today. Here's Bird on his cut. Nice move, but he missed the shot. Gross. Nobody boxed out Luke Gross. And Gross, who scores normally four points a game, Greg, now has ten. And he's getting them off the offensive glass. Good effort that time by Luke Gross. You, know, you don't think he's very quick, but that time a good quick first step underneath. The one thing he will do, he'll really work you to death on the backboards. Here's Stuckey on his cut. Down low. Missed it. There's a nice tip for Bastock. Wondering when we were going to hear from Andy again on that baseline. He's got 15 points now. Had a career high of 23 recently against Lamar. Players getting ready to check back in for Tate's locks team including Vickers and Cheatham, and if either of these teams could get tired, you, you tend to wonder, would it be Bradley because they only used six, or Indiana State because they just played a very tough game two nights ago against uh, Southern Illinois. Well, JP, your comment's right on. It was a tough ball game for them against uh, SIU on Thursday night, and I'd have to say that it'll be Indiana State. I don't think they have the physical strength, and I think that's a real concern of Tate's lock, and I think that's why we saw Vickers in the lineup instead of Greg Thomas. He was concerned about the legs of Thomas, and he also feels like that Eddie Bird can only play 25 minutes per ball game. Dwayne Brown with it. By now, I guess Stan's players are used to being in a six-man rotation, but from what I'm told, they're not used to all that foul trouble of late. Jackson with a four. Got a foul on Shell, away from the ball. Well, Bradley not doing themselves any favors. You know, at the end of the game, people will always say, well, that was a tough call, or that was a tough call. But I gotta say this, on a, on a few of these calls, Bradley's players have put themselves in bad positions. And that was the case there. That was a personal foul, and that's Jay Shell's third personal foul. Oh, Cheatham canned it. That was a two-pointer. He almost got a foul there on Houston. So Ron Cheatham, who's a good perimeter shooter, cans one there. And Bradley's still playing a man-to-man -man defense. I still look for him maybe to get out of the man-to-man -man and go to his zone. 
Yeah, Bradley's hanging in there, and hanging in there might be a good term because of the two teams, Indiana State's more on their game than Bradley is on theirs. Stuckey bringing it out, not a shell. On the bounce pass, here's White for his jumper from 16. Ice cold today. White has come into the game, averaging about seven a game, but he's missed his last four from the field. Cheatham gives it up. Gross might be. No, it's not out of his range. Don't second guess Luke Gross on that, but that's the farthest I've seen Luke Gross ever take a shot in the Valley. But he made it count, so there's that confidence thing I'm sure that you were talking about before. In any event, that last shot is given. Indiana State is 6.8. One of those shots where maybe the coach is mad if you miss, but how could he be mad when you make it? Next, Derek, I don't know whether Luke Gross heard our opening and didn't hear his name mentioned or what, but what a great day. He's had 12 points and 8 rebounds for Gross, and we were thinking more that Jackson might have the big game against Gross. He's done exceptionally well. Well, Luke Gross, it's been his show here in the second half. He scored 8 of ISU's 13 second-half points including that last one from what is normally considered out of his range. He probably thought they should have counted that three for him. <laughs> Shell down low for at least two and a half. Here's Houston on the turnaround. Memphis Houston, very quiet this half. He had 10 in the first half. That's his first field goal. Brown, now to cheat him and the press is on, but they beat it. Dwayne Brown, did he walk? Yes, he did. Well, it's frustrating when you've beaten the trap like they did and then give it up like that. Well, I think Kate's Lock would like to see his ball club. They didn't really have the numbers in the transition. And Brown should have backed it back out, ran that shot clock, got him into some kind of an offensive set. Now, you're speaking before jokingly about getting gross three points, but in three-point range, they are five for six. Bradley just one for three. By the way, folks, Jackson is back into the lineup. Outside jumper, and it's finally canned by Charles White. And that could be a big one. It cuts it to two, and you can feel a little momentum on Bradley's side in the crowd of better than 7,400 trying to give them some life here. Normally they average at least 8,000 a game. This early morning start may have thrown some people. The offensive foul is drawn by Houston. Nice defensive effort that time by Zampton. Houston beat him with the basketball, put it on the floor to take the drive, but really a nice job by Bradley on the defensive end. Jackson will be inbounding. Tate's lock has got to be happy the way his team has played, especially two days after that tough game against Southern. That could have been anyone's game, and they lost it in the closing seconds. They've lost one other game this year in the closing seconds as well. So their 7-8 record looks great in Terre Haute. It could look even better had they got a couple of breaks. There's White. To the outside for Jackson. Now it's Stuckey. Right before it. He was fouled by Vickers. And for Vickers, that's going to be his third personal foul. With 11 and a half to go, it's a two-point deficit for Bradley. Good quick move by Stuckey, and Vickers just doesn't have the quickness that Stuckey has. Underneath, it should be a two-shot foul. Stuckey couldn't make it count. Looks like Gross committed a foul underneath. Oh, they're going to give it to 23 Brown. His second. Stuckey just really slipped in among two or three different defenders. Looked like a missed assignment defensively for Indiana State there. And Cheatham and, and Brown taking a look at each other and kind of asking each other, who was supposed to check Stuckey on that play? <laughs> uh, Stuckey's a, a local player in high school. And he attended Drake. And then you probably know that story by now that he did transfer. And he couldn't play here until December 14th. But what a difference he's made. And he's got another year to go after this. 12 points for Stuckey. He's a great champion for the recruiting cause of Bradley. When they bring recruits on the campus, they like to let Mr. Stuckey talk to them. He does a great sales job. 50 off. Second time this game has been tied, and the first time was at 2-2 in the opening minute of the game. Brown missed. I'm waiting for the crowd to chant air ball because that's what that was. Here comes Stuckey, and a tough collision on Vickers, and that insult to injury, he gets the foul. Well, that hurts in two ways, physically, and it's the fourth Vickers foul. And it could have been the fourth personal foul on Stuckey. Stuckey very quick with the basketball, and Vickers just didn't get there in time. What a collision it was between Stuckey and Vickers. Vickers is going to have to lose the ball game. His fourth personal foul, and Greg Thomas checks back in for Indiana State along with Travis Inman. Inbounded by White outside. Oh, that's NBA range, isn't it? Shell missed. 
He was downtown Peoria when he shot that one. Coming back was Greg Thomas. Good looking freshman guard. Off a tip White upset that he didn't get it. Stan Albrecht thought that it went off bird. Little smile from White there. You don't think Stan Albrecht might try and work the fish with a little nah, bit. No, no, no. I don't think so. <laughs> Cheetah with the ball. Right side of Thomas. Looking for Bird on the baseline. That's a tough pass to even make. And we apparently will have a timeout. A timeout on the floor. Bradley doing a lot better over the last 30, 40 seconds. They have got themselves into a tie position. Big hoops for Bradley and Luke Gross. Is, you know, he's been the offensive show here in the second half for Indiana State. Shell outside. Now to Jackson. White will give it back to Jackson. Luke Jackson on his drive was going to go up. Thought he moved his pivot, but here's Houston bringing it back outside. Jackson only took two shots in the first half, and I don't think it takes much to figure out that he hasn't taken any in this half. So that's one of the reasons why he's not been a factor. Here's Shell cutting underneath to Stuckey. Can't get it. Nice job on the baseline. Kept in by Shell. White for three. He's short. Houston, the big rebound. Houston on the follow-up. Give him 14 points. Four above his average. And Thomas will take it. The lead belongs to Bradley, 52-50, and you can sense they're coming on. And a second chance opportunity for Bradley, the rebound by Houston, and I agree, JP, the momentum's definitely shifted to the side of the ledger for Bradley. Cheetah now to Inman. Indiana State's got to figure something out here, and they do, as Bird hits it from the free throw line. Eddie Bird, 10 points, and averaging almost 15 a game this season. And more recently, coming off the bench is his sixth man. Here's Jackson. Luke Jackson, that's from 15. Doesn't get the roll. His first shot here in the second half. Thomas against Stuckey. A 52-52 game. We're down to about nine minutes to go. Just over that, a few seconds over here in the second half. Here at the Carver Arena. Bradley has won 81% of their game since moving here. Inman will make it three. Clutch basket for the sophomore, Travis Inman, who shoots that shot at almost 39%. Oh, he's just a good standstill shooter. He's not going to see him get many baskets off the drive. But you give him a little daylight, and he'll hurt you. Stuckey had that same daylight and matched him for three. He hits that at about 31%. Answer time. Stuckey right back the other way with a three-point bomb. Right after the crowd's taken out by the Inman shot, who brings him back in? Off Bird's fingertips. And hit the line, but they'll get it back. There are the three-point statistics, and Indiana State has only missed once to them. And Bradley at two of five. Greg Thomas now to the cutting bird. Bird pulls up. He had three men on him when he missed that shot. Good follow-up rebound, but Cheetah missed it. And there's Luke Jackson. The quick dish for Stuckey off the block, and then Jackson ran into Stuckey. Almost took out his own teammate. Did you hear that? Page Locke said, don't talk to him, just referee. Cheat him a good hustling play right there. Tried to get the easy stick back, couldn't get the shot to go, and bodies everywhere. Jackson quick out with a basketball. Houston now to Shell. Now to White. Charles White. It's a 55-55 game, fourth time that the game has been tied. Indiana State at one point had a nine-point leader, Shell. Outside, no room there. Oh, down underneath to White on the baseline. He kicks it out for Jackson from 15. Luke Jackson's first two, and we've only got 7.45 to go in the game. It's got to be his worst numbers at this stage of the game in any game that he's played in the Valley. That was a big basket for Bradley right there. It gives him that two-point lead, and Jackson hit the jump with the free-throw line. Travis Inman. Let's see if that picks up Luke and brings him back in here. Bird was fouled before the shot. And we've got a holding call, looks like, on White. So Charles White will commit his first foul. He's a local player as well, a freshman from Peoria. Stan has three local players on this roster. Lost Dion Butler to the injury. Lost Roman Beach to transfer on the other side. Kenny Rowan and Mike Smith went down with knee injuries for Tate's lock. That didn't help them. Rowan was such a promising player. And he was a starter. Here's Cheatham. So was, uh, so was Smith in the end. 
He's going to foul underneath. Say goodbye to Luke Jackson. That's it for Luke. I have not seen a game where Luke Jackson has had numbers this poorly. Cheat him very quick with the basketball once again. No weak side help out of Bradley on the defensive end. It was a dribble drive and just beat Houston on the drive. And Jackson tried to give the weak side help but didn't get there in time. And anytime you can split two defenders, yeah. JP, the offensive player is not going to get the foul. And Luke Jackson leaves with five personal fouls, five rebounds, and only two points. And this guy came in at 15.4 per game and 9.1 rebounds. Well, you said it best before that... Uh, Jackson, just his mere presence in there is something. That's a big psychological lift, even though Jackson hadn't done anything. You saw where he got that big two-pointer about two minutes ago. Cheatham will make it one for two from the line. And give Ron Cheatham five points in a one-point deficit. Now let's see what Bradley does. They now know that they're, what did you call them? Not the spectacular six. What did you call them? A sensational six. Sensational six. Well, you can say spectacular. Well, they're down to five. Here's Stuckey. It could be the famous five before it's over. Stucky on a miss. Houston reached in. His third foul. So the foul troubles continue here for the Bradley Braves. You know that when things aren't going well, the, the shot there by Stuckey looked like it was in the bottom of the cylinder and still popped back out. Looked like it was gonna, gonna fall, but popped right back out. Houston there, a little disbelief. Uh, personal foul on Xanthus Houston. Houston and Bastock will now have to carry more of the load, as will Stuckey. Without Jackson, here's Thomas, now to Bird. Outside to Cheatham. They work it to Inman, and the horn went off again, and that's what happened in the first half of play. Tate's lock coming over to check things out. Correctable error. A correctable error. Well, let's see. A correctable error. Oh, and Houston's foul, they should have been in the bonus. That's what it was, a correctable error. So, they'll do that. Let's see, let's see who's gonna take them. And I'm sure it takes a lot, we'd love to see Greg Thomas. Greg okay, Thomas walked over to shoot the free throws. Yeah. Hey, this guy's Mr. Automatic yeah. at the line. Yeah. He was walking behind the officials and hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't think that's who we're gonna see at the line though for Indiana State. <laughs> uh, do you remember it? I'm trying to think of, uh, of what had taken place. Was, I think it should be Cheatham at the line. Yeah. See if they adjust the time as well. They're going over to talk to Stan Albeck. Had to be Cheatham or Gross at the line, didn't it? The foul was down low on the inside. Yeah, the foul I don't remember where Thomas was. It definitely far. wasn't Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, if you take luck, you hope that the 86% oh, yeah. free throw sure. shooter can go right. There's Mo McCohn, Stan Albeck's longtime assistant in various stops. And we'll see what they're going to do. Now, Gross is going to be at the line. Luke Gross having a nice day today. A good afternoon for Gross. He comes in, not getting much credit. Tate Slot told me yesterday that Eddie Bird has been his most improved player from the start of the year, and he said Gross will be right up there as well. So even though the numbers don't show it, Tate Slot knows it. At the free throw line, Gross misses. We look at Tate Slot. I think he's not into the game, same with his counterpart. And the ball's gonna belong to Indiana State. After the missed free throw, it was a correctable error. It was a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and Gross could get the shot to go at the free throw line, but Indiana State has the basketball. Cheatham, down low, Inman wants it to the baseline. Travis Inman, the good outside touch, he's back in double figures. He had gone five straight until the Southern Illinois game. Now, he has scored double figures in six out of his last seven games. Jay Shell on the outside, 6.27 left in the game. White walk. He walked with the ball. Costly turnover for the freshman. But they don't have that leadership of Anthony Manuel, who did so many great things for that team. Talk about a leader. He led him in everything. Offensively, defensively, he had the steals, the assists, the points. Well, now let's see what they're going to be doing. Well, Indiana State just will get the ball. They're going to yeah. bring the ball in bounds, JP. The ball still belongs to the Sycamores on that turnover. No question that there was a travel. There's Thomas against Stuckey. This one may go right down to the wire with 58-57 right now. A one-point game. At one point, it was a nine-point lead. Bird was given the baseline. He took it in. Well, you got to close the baseline down, and they didn't do it. Bird wisely took it to the hoop. A lot of his points have come from the outside, but not that time. White. 
Yeah, wide open, wide is from the outside. They're giving him the shot there, and he just keeps turning the shot down. Until now. And he hits it. Or maybe he heard you. He said, I got to listen to that Greg Sterick. He knows what he's talking about. But you're right. If you don't show that you're going to take that shot, offensive foul on Inman. That's his third. Takes lock is up. He wants to settle his young team down. Inman on the dribble drive and shell. And what Bradley likes to do is get you in a double team. And Inman gave him a little push off with the elbow and got the call. And Bradley gets the basketball with a chance to take the lead on this possession. They're trailing by one. Here's Shell. Now to Stuckey. White is wide open here, and they're giving it to him again against Bird. He tried to close him to miss. Big rebound by Bastock, and then I thought he lost it. But they're going to say it belongs to Bradley. Well, that's effort all the way for Bastock. Pickers are getting ready to check in. I was about to say before, a point you mentioned. If you know a player's not going to shoot, like in White's case, you can sing off and help out underneath, and that's... You've got to take advantage of that if you're Indiana State, but if you're Bradley, I think White's going to start taking it. Well, that's why you have to put it up from the outside. And again, Bradley's good offense has been a shot from the outside, and Bastock going to the glass. Going to hold. And it looks like, let's see, Dwayne Brown. Well, he's in some foul trouble as well with three fouls, 5.20 to go. It's a one-point game. Bradley is trailing here. And again, it's the bonus situation on this side as it is on the other side. If it comes down to free throw shooting, Indiana State, the best free throw shooting team when you count all games, when you just take it to three Valley games that they've played, then Bradley's on top, but they have not been a good free throw shooting team this year when you count all the numbers. Houston has 15 points, five better than his season average, six better than his season average. And any free throw here is clutch. Here's Cheatham. Now to Inman. They've been guilty of two 10-second violations, but not three. Brown, almost forcing the turnover. Inman, good job to get it outside of Vickers, but you could see that they were feeling that pressure, the Sycamores, but they did beat it initially. A very alert play, though, by the point guard Vickers, getting back into some kind of an offensive set, run some time, be patient, execute on the half court. Yeah, at that point, you don't want a 10-second violation. Not that you want it at any time, but here it's critical. Inman missed on the three, stuck it. Coming back, slowing it down for Bradley. Did you ever think you'd be saying slowing it down for Bradley over the last few years? But that's in the repertoire now. Jay Shell picked up by Inman. Stuckey fell and landed. Funny on his knee, but he appears to be okay. I'll tell you that first grimace, I thought he hurt himself, but he's all right. He's okay and right back up. Yeah, with the ball. Had a cut by Stuckey right there. It looked like his foot just slipped out from under him and got that knee kind of turned up underneath. And you're right, JP. Sometimes when you see a player go down like that, it can be nasty for a knee injury. Just to be a, just a freak thing here. No contact, no push. He just stopped. 61-60. Bradley with the one-point lead and they inbound here. Shell for three if it feels good, take it. But he missed. Stuckey the big rebound on the offensive boards. The turnaround jumper is no good. Houston, oh, did he ever land hard? He landed like Jerry Cooney in the Foreman fight. Let's see how Houston is doing. That hurt. Big rebound, but watch how he hits. Stuckey with a rebound, offense rebound. Stuckey with a shot outside, but look how high Houston went up to get the basketball. Came down on Luke Gross and looked like uh, bodies just came in contact and really uh, the leg flew up there of Xanthus Houston hit the deck very, very hard. It's very, very slow to get up, JP. Well, something that Bradley can ill afford is an injury to anybody, but especially this man. He's been one of their more effective players and one of the candidates for our player of the game. And we'll pick one when this is over. Excuse me, JP, but he has been a factor on the inside. You know, Jackson's on the bench with five personal fouls. It's been Houston and uh, Bastock on the inside. Houston with 16 points and Bastock with 15, so that's 31 of the 61 points for Bradley that come on the inside from those two guys. And they needed it, especially today with Jackson not having the numbers. that really given them a lift uh, with Jackson. Uh, He's out with five personal fouls and only two points and, and one rebound. I think uh, the points aren't as significant as the fact that Luke didn't come away with any more rebounds than that. I'm checking out, was that last foul? If that last foul was Gross's, that's three on Luke Gross. 
and he has had a great day today. So is this man. He's eight for nine there at the free throw line. Houston, he missed there. He came into the game with four numbers from free throw land at 53%, but he's improved his average here today. A one point Bradley lead, 4-12 to go. Off a tip, oh, Stuckey would have been off to the races if he got that. Vickers, great job to get it to Burke. That should have been a Bradley break the other way, but Vickers hung in there. Dwayne Brown kicks it back out. Bradley's really picked it up a notch though defensively. Bird looked like he walked, but canned it. Eddie Bird, a big two for Eddie. 62-61, lead back to the Sycamore. Here's White on his drive. He'll bring it back out. Took himself in out of position. And now we'll milk the clock a little bit. Jay Shell outside now to Bastock to White. White looking, will kick it back out to Stuckey. Pull up jumper from 18, he'll get the roll. Stuckey with 17 points. And the one point Bradley lead. Vickers. Coming right back the other way. Now to Dwayne Brown. Bradley leading it here by one. Eddie Burke from the outside. Steps in, gives it up to Gross, kick out back to Bird. Vickers now, Indiana State, patiently moving it around, everyone getting a touch. Bird almost walks, Dan Albeck says he did, but he doesn't have a whistle. <laughs> Here's Vickers, shot clock, reading 14. Bird, the jumper, it was short, he forced that one up. Bradley ball. Well, that's not the kind of shot if you bring it down to 15 that you want to take. Indiana State took it. They trail here by one. Still an awful lot of time to play with this official's timeout. 2.44 remaining in the game still. Anybody's game. I grew up on a farm just down the road. I know most everybody in town and handle the insurance for quite a few. I'm their state farm agent, Dennis Hoffrogi. My job is to help my neighbors, to help them protect their families and the things they've worked for. It's a job I take seriously. Every state farm agent does. You know, a state farm started out in small towns just like this. People trying to help their neighbors. And we're still helping. And like a good neighbor, state farm is there. I can sure use my tax refund now. With H&R Block's Rapid Refund Program, you don't have to wait. Great, but I'm a little short of cash right now. With Rapid Refund, you don't need any money. What's that? With Rapid Refund, H&R Block files your federal return electronically with the IRS. So your refund loan is on its way to you in a matter of days. You don't need any cash. All fees can be deducted from your check. Available whether Block prepares your return or not. That's the way it ought to be. That's the new Rapid Refund Program from H&R Block. It's a one-point Bradley lead, and one of the reasons why Curtis Stuckey has caught fire with nine second-half points, a total of 17. So he's been able to penetrate against the Indiana State defense. That was a real concern of the Indiana State, taking that penetration drive away from Stuckey. They did it in the first half, J.P., but they haven't done that here in the second half. What's been the difference there, Greg? Well, I think the difference has been Bradley's been able to get some easy baskets on the inside with Houston and Bastock. They've really been forces here in the second half. Smith wants a little rotation here. Brings Bastock out, away from the bucket. Now Shell. Bastock playing out where Jackson was playing before. Here's Shell, three-point land. Won't get the roll. Houston, big rebound, missed it. Rebound. It's good for Houston. Do they count it? Let's see. No basket. No basket. Oh, Houston's upset. No basket. Well, they're going to wipe the basket off, JP, but it was White that was in on the offensive glass. He's the guy that missed the rebound. Shell from the outside. Indiana State playing his own that trip, and the slap up by Houston didn't go, but the little guy, White, slipped in for the offensive rebound, couldn't convert the, the hoop, and then it was Houston that was fouled on the play, and Houston's going to be at the line to shoot one and one. Memphis Houston. 
again, you got to talk about the pressure. He's had a great day at the free throw line, but here's a 53% free throw shooter in the pressure situation. Well, he's got 17 points. He's had a great, uh, great day of basketball for Bradley. Missed that one, but it's a two-point Bradley lead as Gross leaves it off for Thomas. Greg Thomas, the freshman from Speedway, Indianapolis. Nice name for a town in Indianapolis, or in Indiana, I should say. Two minutes, two minutes. Home of the Indy 500. Here's Dwayne Brown. Nowhere to go with it. Pretty close to a five-second closely guarded call. Big possession, too, for Indiana State, and Bradley's really turned it up on the defensive end. Greg Thomas, now to Burt. Kicked away, just as Charles White reached out to get it, he kicked it away. And what that does also, J.P., when you kick it like that, the point lead for Bradley, 64, for Bradley, 62, Indiana State. Carl Kalitza, that's the second time he's kicked the ball today. One right in front of our press table in the first half. Here's Dwayne Brown. These two teams picked for 7th and 8th in the Valley. Foul is going to be called on White. They were picked for 7th and 8th by the coaches and the media. But last year, the coaches and the media were not all that sharp. They picked Creighton for the bottom, and Tony Peroni said, uh-uh. And he won the whole thing, regular season and the tournament. So we'll see what happens this year. But one thing you can say, these two teams have really done a lot better than people expected them to. And they come out and play with fire. That's an uncharacteristic miss for Bird in the one and one. He's a very good free throw shooter. A two-point Bradley with 1.17 to go. And they're starting to get on their feet here in Peoria. Stucky. Now to White. Shell, who's going to take the shot? A minute to go. 19 on the clock, shot clock that is. White sees it. Two-point edge here for Bradley. Big possession here, just like it was for Indiana State. Turn around, jumper, no good. And it goes Indiana State's way. And guess what? The game clock says 45. The shot clock says 45. So they can side for Indiana State. But, you know, I really look for Indiana State to try and get the basketball in the hands of Eddie Bird or Travis Inman. Stan just didn't want him to get an easy shot. And Bird's going to draw a double team no matter where he is. And that might free somebody up on the inside. Two points will tie it. Three would win it. And they can use the whole clock if they choose. Both teams are in the bonus situation as well in the fouls. Here's Bird. Coming back. Now to Inman. The young Indiana State team and playing well a couple days off a very disappointing loss to Southern. And that was a home loss at the Homer Center. Greg Thomas. And wants to call it will inbound it. Greg Thomas. Coming back the other way. Thomas from 15. Doesn't get the roll. Straight up with a rebound. Bird. White hits the floor. Is it going to be a hell ball? I believe it goes to Indiana State. The last one went Bradley's way. No, nope. Bradley. I'm wrong. There we go. We're on the same side as the shot clock. And the official, so Bradley with three seconds to go. And Indiana State doesn't have a choice, JP. What they've got to do is get a quick personal foul. I looked up and there were three, and that's what he just said to the official. There were three seconds on that clock. And I'll tell you what, in the game of basketball, for anybody that watched the Knicks and the Bulls game the other night, hey, a tenth of a second, a tenth of a second can mean something, right? Oh, I think so. And I think Tate's lock had a legitimate complaint. And uh, we now have three seconds up on the clock, JP, instead of the two. Invited by Sheldon Astock. He lost it, got it back. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Okay, this has been a tough game for coaches. <laughs> and both coaches have worked very, very hard to look there at uh, Tate Block, the coach of Indiana State. And, you know, again, uh, boy, he deserves a lot of credit for bringing this basketball program back. And he's got his ball club with a 7-8 and eight record, 1-2 and two in the league. Oh, you can hear a pin drop when Bastock took that free throw. You can tell who the home team is because you wouldn't have been able to hear, I wouldn't have been able to hear you if this was a road game for Bradley and a guy at the free throw line in the closing second. And what a game this young man's had also. He, Jackson wasn't a factor, and Houston and Bastock have really been the keys for Bradley here in, in the ballgame. 
Bastock at 17, a 66-62 game and a timeout. And those are even more impressive when you figure Jackson was not a factor in this game for Bradley. It was a tough choice, and we also felt like that Bastock played an excellent yep. game for Bradley, but we did agree. We both selected Houston as Pepsi player of the game. Inman will throw it in, Bird. They're not going to touch him for three. He missed it. It would have only brought them to an end one, but the final score is 66 to 62. The Bradley Braves with a four-point win against the Indiana State Sycamores. For Greg Sterick, I'm John Paul Della Camera. Thanks everyone for watching our Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Game of the Week.